Hello there. What's going on, everyone? Today, we're going to be taking a look at Oak and Iron. This is a naval game on a different scale than uh, some of the previous games we've looked at, like Blood and Plunder. This one's a little bit more, think like X-Wing or Armado, that overhead that, you know, you're controlling multiple ships and going to battle against someone else. It's a historical naval battles in the age of piracy. This is by Firelock Games. They actually sent all of this out to me for the channel so we can take a look at it for you guys so big thanks to firelock games for sending this out if you are interested in pirate games definitely check out firelock games i'm going to put a link in the video description right down there click that see more button there's also a kickstarter going on there's only a few days left for their blood and plunder uh their second kickstarter for that uh, which is a little bit more like kind of like Legion where you actually have you're in controlling individual groups of pirates There also happens to have ships, but they're really big ships So if you're interested in something like that, definitely check that out. I'm gonna have a link to that in the description But uh, for the rest of this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Oak and Iron uh, I'm gonna show you guys what comes in the core set and then we're also gonna look at a couple of the expansions as well So you can kind of get an idea of what this game is all about. Let's take a look all right, so inside the core set, you're going to get some, uh, some basically some clouds, some rocks, some islands. This is going to be all your different obstacles. Uh, you're also going to get a play mat. Now, this is actually really cool, and I think it's, uh, I mean, and this is bigger than an X-Wing play mat. This is like, I think this is bigger than 3x3. Three three. This is, this might be a little bit bigger, uh, maybe a little bit more than 3x3, three three. Uh, or maybe exactly 3x3. Three three. These might be exactly one foot squares, but uh, let's actually, let me see. Let me measure this since there's, we've got, um, oh, this is 11 and a half on that, and this is 11 and a half. So just about three by three-ish, uh, but you're going to get in this really nice uh, aquatic play mat. Now this is uh, on like photo, uh, photo reflective paper, so it's real shiny. Uh, definitely is really cool to put your ships on because if you're like me and most of your play mats are all space or ground, that might look a little weird to put, put your ships on. And that's gonna fold up and fit perfectly back in the box. So you don't even have to worry about storage for that, which um, you know play mats do sometimes become a little bit of an issue. We have our rule book here, and this is gonna also have quick reference on the back, and that's gonna have your rule book here. And by the way, uh, you definitely wanna probably paint these ships, although you don't have to, because they do come in uh, certain colors already uh, that are not, that hard to take a look at. Now, uh, I have already uh, opened a bunch of these and taken a, a look at them. Uh, they are a little bit delicate because some of the sails can come off, like I just knocked this one off right here. We're gonna try and get this one back in. There we go. Uh, we're gonna take a look at, this is basically what you're gonna be getting in this particular set. Now, if we look really close, uh, you're gonna see there's a whole, actually a whole lot of detail in there. You can see the individual wooden planks here in this on the ship. Uh, that looks really cool. There's a whole lot of really nice sculpting uh, that you can totally uh, paint up and make look even better. But if you're not interested in painting, you really don't super, super have to because they're already brown for the wood and white for the sails. So they're already ready to go. Uh, your ship bases are going to have your different sections already kind of uh, marked off in there. So they And the ships are going to have these little pegs on the bottom. They're going to go right in nice and easily and you're good to go, just like that. Well, I like to keep them in the bags uh, because all of the sails aren't necessarily all of the same for all of the different ships. So we've got a lot of different ship types. We've got larger ships, smaller ships, uh, really small ships. So just like to compare, you know, if this was a game like X-Wing or Armada, you know, you've got your, your, your large, your medium, and your small. You know, you've got your, uh, you know, your really expensive ships, and then your, uh, your little bit more swarmy ships that you can afford more of in a build and this is definitely going to be in that style of of game like that where you're going to actually be building ships and uh, building fleets and comparing them against somebody else's fleets so these are uh, really really well designed I, I really like the look of them um there's one of them that i'm having a uh, that, that gives me a little bit of a difficulty with getting the sails to stay on that's this one right here but uh, i probably just have to keep working i might have to actually i think honestly if you if you uh, putting a little glue on there to help it stay in once you are once it's all painted and everything is probably not a really bad idea but uh you're gonna actually get in this set um how many ships do we actually get as a six yeah we have actually six ships in this particular set one two three four five six we're also going to get a bunch of cards we have this uh range ruler 
And the range ruler is actually pretty cool because it's got basically short, medium, and long range, like we have in a lot of our games. But the but the distances are actually uh, very, very uh, like the, uh, your short range right here for basically for your pistols, for example, is really short, uh, a lot shorter than in other games. Uh, so it's not segmented into thirds like something like X Wing. You actually have you know a very different set of uh, of measurements on this particular. Now both sides are the same here, uh, but then you've got uh, basically pistols rifles and cannons and that's actually going to correspond to your dice uh your dice are going to have uh you how many dice do you get in the core box you're going to get uh six dice and these are all d8s and they're going to have skull and crossbones you're going to have rifles you're going to have pistols you're going to have swords and you're going to have sails and uh i believe swords are actually able to be used if you are within uh the basically like not here but like if you're actually within this range like if you're practically touching then you then you can kind of board uh i'm a little rusty i don't i don't have all of the rules down completely because uh we've been looking over this this is one of those games that i'm definitely trying to get to the table a little bit more we're going to get some maneuver uh templates uh for different speeds and angles uh they, these are going to help us angle we have a whole lot of different tokens that are going to be used for the game. Uh, and, and some of these are really cool because you've got some of these wind tokens and uh, movement tokens that kind of help uh, active, like it show if a ship has fired already. Like you put like the whoosh from the cannons like on the side, or if they've already moved, you can put this like behind them. And, uh, and, and it's a way to show that they've already moved, but it's not like, but it's not uh, breaking immersion as much as just putting a big old red token on a ship. It's giving the effect of, hey, we've already shot, you know, and you can see the smoke from, from the ship. And that is actually pretty cool and, and the way that that works. I'm going to give you guys a look at some of the cards uh, that we get. Um, there's actually quite a bit of cards, uh, especially with the... And they, there's different numbers that are going to go on here with the, with the uh, different uh, initiatives uh, that go along with different armies that you can play. Uh, there are also... I believe there are, like, commander cards, and we've got those. We've got a whole different deck of cards that I haven't gone into too much. There's actually quite a bit of card play in this as well, and... Um, they are all kind of written in this this burnt kind of map, like you you know like you found a, a hidden treasure map. All keeping in that pirate theme here. And then there's also a couple of smaller cards in here. I'm actually not sure what these do just yet, but I'm sure that will be made clear once I get to actually play the game a little bit more. Um, so yeah, this is basically what uh, what you're going to see in the core set. Every ship uses, uh, I believe, the same base. Or they're all, all the bases are basically the same. Uh, makes it a little bit easier and more standardized across the board. Uh, but it doesn't stop here because we've got more expansions. So let's take a look at some of those. So first up is the Men of War expansion. And this is going to add actually three uh, new frigates that you can add to your fleets. Uh, and also some more tokens to support having three more ships. Uh, you're going to get three more bases, and they they come kind of uh, wrapped in uh, like a paper to kind of keep them from being scratched up too much. And you're going to have each of your ships individually packaged. I've taken the liberty of putting one of them together already. These are really large, too, a little bit bigger than you've seen before. So really nice. If you like the bigger ships, which I usually tend to do, uh, these are, this is going to get you three more pretty big, uh, ships. You're going to have a fourth, fifth, and sixth rate frigate. And this is kind of what your cards look like. I didn't actually show this from the, uh, from the core box, because I think there were in, in, underneath the other ships. Uh, but basically all of the ships are going to have all of this stuff to mark, basically, their damage and the things that they've done. Uh, also the upgrades are going to be on the back here, which is pretty cool. And I love that, you know, you're not getting overwhelmed with upgrade cards like other games tend to do. Uh, it's just like here here's what it can take uh and you know what do you want to it to take and here's how many points it's going to cost it's just that's really cool um and but all your point values and everything are going to be on here and uh so that is pretty cool and any sp special keywords for example uh you're going to see right there like this one's fast this one's got high free board and then of course this one's got both so pretty pretty cool stuff uh let's go ahead and take a look at ships of the line all right, in the uh, Ships of the Line pack, we're actually going to get some more frigates, too. We're going to get the first, second, and third rate frigates. Maybe I should have done this one first. So we're going to go to one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Instead, I did four, five, six, one, two, three. So it's like Star Wars. Actually, no, this is the appropriate way to do it for this channel. We do four, five, six first, then one, two, three, uh, and then seven, eight, nine. We don't have seven, eight, nine. We, know what? we don't need seven, eight, nine right now. Let's, let's, let's just focus... Uh, on <laughs> one, two, three, uh, and and we're gonna get uh, some really, really big, bulky 
big big bulky frigates here. These are huge. I don't know which one is which. As a matter of fact, they're uh, ooh, this is this is the biggest one yet. This is the biggest one yet. It's huge, man. Look at that. Um, another thing that I didn't talk about in the other thing, because we're also going to get our cardboard and our ship bases. Uh, but another thing that all of these come with is these little clips. Um, so these are actually really cool because I have seen some people uh, like mark on cards. Uh, and if you don't want to mark on cards, you can certainly slide a little clip in here and just be like, oh, we're right here right now. And then, then move it down. You know, oh, we took all our crews dead or whatever. So you can you can certainly mark these uh, this way instead of having to laminate them and then like mark it with a dry erase, which I mean, I suppose you could do that too if you wanted to. But I think a lot of people are very reluctant to want to mark their cards. So this is a great way for you to keep track of everything that you have, like, or your, oh, I have this upgrade, for example. You can put them over there and you get a couple of these. So that's pretty cool. All right, next up is Blackbeard's Revenge. This one has two ships inside. It's going to have Queen Anne's Revenge and the Sloop Revenge. And uh, I went ahead and uh, put these together. First off, we're going to get our two ship cards as well as the Captain Steed Bonnet card. Uh, and... These are interesting. Now, the, the Queen Anne's Revenge has, like, the biggest sail right up front, which I think that's right, but, you know, after looking at, at the uh, artwork when I'm putting this, the, uh, the sails on, uh, it's, you know, not quite as big as some of those other frigates, but it's still pretty cool looking. Um, now, the sloop, however, uh, has one of the things that I, I do find some difficulty with, and I will show you um, because it's got these, if you can see right here you got these little holes right there where this goes in right there it's only got two spots on the ship but you've got three sails so it means this extra sail here has to connect into there and then it has to oh no and then it has to also go right there and then it has to go into there and then so we're trying to get there we go. we're trying to get both of these little pieces into there, which it can be a little tricky. This is like one of those times where, where you need might need to put in some glue because I'm trying. Oh, oh, all right. And I'm gonna push that one in, then this one comes out. Okay, okay. I got them in. I got them in. But then if I go to put this away, those are both gonna pop out. So like you know, you might need to put some glue on there to kind of hold it in, which I think is probably a good idea. Uh, but it looks really good when you get it in, and so sometimes it's worth that challenge and that effort. Very cool stuff. And that's uh, Blackbeard's Revenge. All right, so that's oak and iron. That's just a quick look at it. Uh, I'm hoping to get this to uh, to table a little bit more and get some games in soon. Uh, it looks really, really fun. And as far as rules are, it doesn't look like it's too rules heavy. So it looks like it's a lot more approachable. If you're a fan of games like Armada and X-Wing and you've been looking for something with like a pirate flavor to it, this might be for you. So definitely check out Firelock Games. Also check out their most recent Kickstarter for Blood and Plunder. That's running right now, uh, but hopefully you guys dig it. It looks really fun, and I, uh, if you want to learn more, click down in the description below. You're going to see a See More button that's going to have more links. Uh, you can check out all those links down there, as well as the links for my channel and my website and all that other stuff as well. Uh, big thanks to Firelock Games for sending this out. Show them some love. I want to thank you so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are amazing. I could not do this without you. Thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.